right, welcome, 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 you too. You know who it is, man. The dynamic duo, Big Pan Sports Talk, with Classified 3F with Joe. And this is going to be another show that we're going to bring to you, man. My brain's always working. Joe's brain's always working. We're always coming up with new stuff. And this is going to be called Giant Giants Interactions with yours truly and Classified 3 of Joe. Giants Interactions is going to be a show where we interact with Giants representatives as far as like the GM, the owner, the coaches, the players. This is basically what we're going to be doing about interviews that the players, the Giants organization in, in, in general do. We're going to go over their interviews and we're going to give you a positive side of the media. We're going to actually give you true opinions. We're not going to be asking dumb questions. We're just going to go over the questions they're asked and we're going to get their point of view, and then we're going to give you our point of view on things. Yep. And the first episode is going to be Mr. John Mayer, his press conference. It's a pretty hot press conference of people are having their own opinions about how the press conference went, uh, went for him, and we're just going to give our opinion on things, and let's see, let's see exactly what's going on uh, yep. with the press conference. So as you can see, Mr. Mayer looking right there. We're going to go ahead and get to the press conference. I'm going to test the audio real quick, and I want you to tell me if you can hear it, Joe. Thanks, Dion. Good afternoon, oh, yeah. everybody. I real thought... good. Okay, cool. So Real good. But right, I see, all, I see a ahead. lot of people, Pat, though, that are like, hey, did you guys see the press conference? Hey, did you guys see what John Mara said? Hey, did I? You know, so, so we see you guys out there asking these questions. You know, of content you want to see, so that that's what we're going to go for. Please, I mean, drop a comment down below, like, subscribe, ring that bell, get notified when we're doing more of these types of videos. If if there's something you guys want to see, we're listening, we're listening to you guys. You know, so so bring the questions, bring the heat, you know, bring what you want to see out of a YouTube content creator. We'll definitely look at it and figure out a way to try to make it uh, presentable. Exactly, man. We listen to the fans and exactly what this guy normally does. So we're going to listen to the fans and give you what you want. Let's get into this press conference. <laughs> Thanks, Dion. Good afternoon, everybody. I thought in light of the uh, uh, events that have taken place over the last couple of days that uh, I ought to give you the opportunity to ask some questions. So let's get right into it and uh, get started. Respect, NBC. John, you made two big changes this week, changes again. Why should Giants fans believe you will get it right this time? All right. Now, this is this is the part where we hear the question. We're going to give our point of view first, and then we're going to let John Mara answer. Now, the question was asked, what, how, why should we trust that John Mara get it right this time? I'm going to go first. I'm going to say this. He hasn't given us a reason to trust it that he can get it right this time. Uh, he got it wrong when he fired Tom Coughlin and kept Reese. Reese wanted to keep his job, so he did a immaculate amount of spending for that one year. It did work out for one year, even though most Giants fans call that 2016 season a fluke. And after that, it's been down here since. We've been through one, two, three coaches, McAdoo, Sherman, and Judge. We've been through three coaches in what? five years, three coaches in five years since that, that time. And he hasn't given you a reason to think that he can get it right. He didn't get it right with Dave Gettleman and he didn't get it right with the three coaches that followed with Dave Gettleman. So I don't, I don't think he has a, has a ground to stand on to say that he can get it right. We just have to trust him. We're Giants fans. We just have to trust him. So Joe, what, what do you think about that? Side with the fans here on this right now, because I've, witnessed you know the maras and what they do to a football team from his father all the way up till now um it took a long time for wellington mara to earn the trust of this franchise it was as bad as it was in the 70s and now you know john's getting an exact taste of of what that was like for 10 bad years but you know you know <sighs> how's this guy gonna go about it i mean everyone's pissed off at the free pepsi you know, you, you have four <laughs> season tickets. You only get one. Okay. You know, that was a clown show. Um, him not coming to uh, 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 whose who's, uh, jersey retirement was it? He wouldn't show his face. I think it was straight hands. It was, that, that was straight wrong. Hands. 
that was a hundred percent wrong. Uh, there's some, there's some other Giants players that definitely need to be involved in the Ring of Honor. He hasn't stepped up and done that. Uh, he basically has ex players turning their back on him. He has fans turning his back on him. And right now, the only correct thing John Merrick can do to even have any semblance of resurrecting a fan base is just be quiet. Don't say anything. You know, tell us who our GM is. Step back. Tell, you know, let the GM do the press conferences till next year. That's about the only way he's going to get it, it because fans are tired. The, people are starting to find out he's sticking his nose in and putting his fingers in these draft picks and making decisions with these guys and, and not letting people do their jobs. And people are tired of it. Yeah, I, I totally agree with that, Joe. I mean, I think he has been sticking his hands in a cookie jar, uh, him and his brother. Um, we're going to get further along into the process with this interview. and He's going to explain some things like that as well. But as far as this first question, no, you cannot trust this guy to make the right decisions. Unfortunately, we're a franchise that cannot trust our owner right now. I know it sounds harsh, but you cannot trust them. But you know what? We are going to trust them because we're diehard Giants fans. We want to see this shit turn around. Yep. Sorry for the explicit, but that, I mean, that's just how I feel right now. We don't have a choice but to trust a billion dollar owner of this franchise. I mean, he's the leader. Let's be real. He's our leader and we have to trust him. We have to see if he can get things right. But let's see what Mr. Mayor has to say about that question. Well, I haven't given him any reason to believe that, uh, Bruce. It's up to me. Um to make the right choices up to Steve and I to make the right choices going forward to earn back their trust. And that is not going to be an overnight process. That's going to take, uh, that's going to take some time, but it starts with getting uh, the general manager pick uh, done uh, correctly. And then with hiring the right head coach. So that's going to be a process that we're going to have to, we're going to have to earn their trust again. And uh, as I said, that's not going to happen overnight. Okay. I mean, that's basically what we said. It. Yeah, that's basically what we said. Uh, seeing a little bit of humility here. Uh, I don't know. Mm -hmm. I judge people's uh, facial expressions and body posture. This is a man that's been humble. Yes. I'm looking at his face right now. This is a man that's been humbled. He looks embarrassed. Uh, it looks like he's very embarrassed to be here to answer questions like these. It looks like a guy that's been a guy that's stern talking to by his father. <laughs> I'm not going to lie to you. <laughs> <laughs> like his father has told him he's disappointed in him and the decisions he's been making. And he looks very embarrassed and a little bit sad, to be honest with you. He looks a little bit somber right here. Uh, Joe, I'd like to hear what you have to say about it, but that's my opinion. Man, I tell you, Pat, you hit the nail right on the head, and I can't add anything really more to that. I mean, mara has been taken to the woodshed by the fans. Uh, you know, he's got his punishment. He's understanding that punishment right now, right here with that look on his face. And he realizes that, you know, okay, as the owner, I, I, I got to do something right, wrong, or indifferent, you know, <laughs> right. and, and, and look, okay. A lot of it's, I understand the fans passion, but Mara cannot listen to anybody right now, but him and Tish. It seems like Tish is the one that cleaned this out, okay? And I know you fans have your favorites. I know you'd love to see who it is. But when I said I wanted to hear from Steve Tish, I wish Steve Tish was up here in this interview too. Because it's only right if he made the decision to get rid of Judge and you know get rid of Gettleman and clean this thing out from top to bottom, he should be out here taking the same abuse as Mara is because he allowed it. Exactly. You know, I don't, I don't want to harp too long on this particular question, but I, uh, you brought up a good point right there, Joe. Do you think it's a little bit unfair for John Mayer to take all the heat by himself while Tish is in the background? And he says, oh, I'm a little angry because the team sucks. But Tish, you never show your face to us, bro. Right. How about you? How about you get a little bit of this humidity? How about you get a little bit of face paint and the red nose put on you as well? Right. Because you're 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 half on it. So. You got to take half the blame. That's that's just me. You can't just. I, I don't want my partner, fifty percent partner, 
to be silent. Right. If I'm gonna go, if I'm gonna go on this dumpster fire and I gotta get brimstone on my ass, hey, you take a little brimstone on your ass too. You come out here and get chewed out by these fans and these people, prominent people, the Michael right. Trey Hands, the Eli Mannings, other other teams. Everybody knows that the Giants is one of the best franchises that's ever raced the NFL football field. And guess what? We're down right now, and everybody's going to take their chance to ATL stompers right now. Get your mm-hmm. jokes in. Like I said, get your face paint painted on them. And I think I think Tish should be right there with him in the fire, man. I do. I, I will give Mayor that. He showed up. He's taking a, he's taking the heat, bro. He's yes. taking the heat for, for what he's done. And who who's to say that Tish didn't have part of these uh, uh, of these situations uh, as well? If not, that's really on him too because you're fifty percent older. You should be in a voicing your opinion on things too. If you've seen things going wrong for the past ten years, why the right. hell haven't we heard from you? Right. You out there in Hollywood? I know you. I mean, he's not a movie star, but he had. I think he has his own production company. For yes, he does. And you out there, you rubbing elbows with the rich and the and the and the wealthy and the and the and the stars and the, you know, all those people. But take some time to come to your organization and get some things right. Don't let just, don't just let this man sit here with egg on his face, having to eat a big piece of humble shit pie because it's right. been bad. It's been bad. Hey. Right. And if you see that your partner. Is not making the correct decisions, and I'm fifty percent owner. That's like me and you, Joe, having a having an organization. Shit, let's just call it Big Blue Crew. We do have our own organization. I'm not trying to be brash or anything, or trying to pump myself up, but we do have our own organization. That's like me let you make decisions all day, and they're the wrong decision, and I just <laughs> sit back there and I'm chilling out. Well, let's just say Chris the entertainer, Chris the entertainer, bagged all the Hollywood of the Giants community because they really are. And I'm right. rubbing elbows with them and doing movies and doing shows, and I ain't doing shit. While you're sitting here, you may not have the capability of making decisions, but you took it upon yourself to do it because, hey, your ego is out of, out of whack. Right. I should be the one to come there and check that ego. And I just want to get your opinion on that, and then we're going to move to the next question. I, I, I just have to get to that, bro. I, I mean, I, I mean, I don't think there's any much I can add on. I really don't. There's nothing I can. Tish needs to come out and and be, uh, you know, uh, set the standard for for blame just as much as Mara's doing right now. So, I mean, we're still disorganized because you've got two owners, but only one showing up for press conferences. Yep. Right, wrong, or indifferent. Tish should be here too. Exactly, but we're gonna get to the next question. But man, that pause right there was immaculate. Look at that face, man. I know. Chat, chat look at that. That's the face of a man who's eating literal shit. Right. <laughs> right. It's not funny, but man, he's a billionaire. He goes through things. He knows how to make money, so he's okay. So I can laugh. You know. Right. He's, he's gonna make another hundred million dollars next year, and he'll be cool. So. Right. I'm Rob Newsday. John, how much do you look at these interviews for general managers and head coaches as as package deals, as as bringing one guy in with with his coach? Uh, okay, now that question there, that was actually a pretty damn good question. I am totally against a package deal right now. I am totally for bringing in the guy that has a vision, and you bring in a head coach that has a vision, and see if their visions can line up anywhere down the line. Because package deals is boom or bust to me, and we can't afford we can't afford a boom or bust right now. Because when we bring a package deal in here and it's a bust, we're looking at five to six to seven, maybe even ten more years of, of just absolute shit. If that package deal comes in, they have a vision that doesn't work, and there's nobody else that can deter them from their vision. There's no what I what what can I call it? what word am I looking? At? There's no no banter between the two, no ideas being thrown off each other. Everything is just. Yeah, let's do that. Yeah, let's do that. Our idea is great. Our idea is going to work. And then if it doesn't work, you're going to see this guy back here at the podium looking like shit again because the fans are torn my whole new ass. Egos. Yeah, egos. That's just, man, you hit it right there on the head, Joe. We do not need super egos in here anymore. We need leaders of men to come in here and say, hey, look, this shit is bad. We're going to get this turned around. How can we work together? To get this done 
not just one 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 mind and everybody's like yeah okay that's cool because i'm cool with you and you're cool with me no i need two people to come in and have meetings like we have meetings and hash this shit out all right that's my whole ordeal on a package deal what do you think about that joe i'm not i'm not for a package deal either but you know what when you're in the nfl that's what you get when you get a new gm okay you get a package deal when you get a gm that fires a coach and looks for another guy that's a package deal most of the time too uh usually the, the the gm has been watching this coach or whatever knows his high and lows uh sees how he operates as a coordinator whether offensively or defensively is he the right guy can he keep a team together at the low points you know how does he keep them together at the high points so where their heads don't get too big because we see that too Guys will get an ego, get a big head, and then lose a game 40 to 10. You know, to, it, that does happen. Um, uh, man, I mean, is it a bad thing if we got Martindale and, and, and from the Ravens with their GM? And then, you know, week Martindale brings over the quarterback's coach from uh, the Ravens, and then we draft like Malik Willis and let him sit for a year? Would that be a bad package deal? Uh, let's look at some package deals. You know, if we get the Bills guy showing, and and then we get what what the hell's his name there, uh, Dayball. Yeah, Brian, Brian D uh, Dayball. Okay, you know what? Uh, the Buffalo Bills fans can't wait to get rid of him. So we're looking at two different tales of the tape here with teams and as far as fans are, because I don't think there's anybody that's a Ravens fans that wants to get rid of Martindale. But there's Buffalo Bills fans that want to get rid of Dable. They cannot wait right. for this man to leave. So you're looking at polar opposites when you bring in a package deal. They usually, you know, Giants fans, listen to yourselves, what you wanted. Okay, and, and then look at what other fans are saying about other teams. You know, we always say that guys from New England don't pan out, but yet guys keep getting taken from New England. But yet we always say that the coaches don't work out, but coaches constantly getting taken from New England. All right, so let's listen to the Buffalo Bills fans here for just a little bit. How bad the running game is there. You know, they do have playmakers, but the offensive line has been struggling. My God, they signed Bobby Hart, and Bills fans thought he was a starting left tackle. <laughs> right. <laughs> yeah. So let, let's look at the whole scenario instead of just part of it with this package deal stuff. Because I don't think there's a Giants fan out there that wouldn't mind the Ravens package, but I'm hesitant with the Bills package. Yeah, I'm, I'm totally with that, Joe. I guess we ain't in agreement on that. Uh, I just wanted to be careful with the package deal stuff. Yes, yes, yes. It, it, it could turn really bad if that package deal turns out to be. No, a horrible package. It turns out Detroit. To be, uh, yeah, exactly, exactly. I don't want somebody to come in and just to hire their homeboy because hey, look, I, I came up. Now you're gonna come up. No, that's it's not how organizations are ran. Organizations are ran off ideas of two grown men, multiple grown men in the organization throwing off ideas off each other. So that package deal thing, I'm not totally with it. Um, I'm actually kind of scared of it to be honest with you. Yes. Um, but we'll, we'll see exactly what happens. Let's see what Mayor has to say about that. Uh, there are no package deals. I mean, each, uh, I, I, we want to get the general manager ideally done first. And obviously we'll talk about um, the candidates uh, for head coach, but uh, there's, it's not going to be a package deal. I want to go through a, uh, a, a complete process here, interview as many people as possible. I don't want to rush into anything. We've made that mistake in the past and i want to make sure we get to see as many candidates uh, as possible ideally all right you heard the man's answer uh, i think mr mayor agrees with us what is yes. i'm gonna bring a little humor to it did john mayor get a spanking <laughs> i don't know <laughs> baby might have <laughs> did papa <laughs> mayor come 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 down <laughs> and, and whoop john for saying hey look what you're doing to my franchise you're making the same mistake that I did. Did that happen? Respect to the to the to the dead, but did that happen? Did Papa Mayor give John Mayor a spank? That's a dude that looked like he just got a spanker. Yeah, he got he got whooped. He got a whooping. But I, oh. I, I do I do agree with his answer right there. That was a very good answer. Um, and I'm gonna be honest with you. He's showing that he is. He's taking his time. 
He's getting he's, candidates. I think they're interviewing over what ten candidates now. I think up to ten. Yeah, nine or ten, something like that. But my, you know what, Mister Mara, right now is thinking like a a businessman. He's not thinking like an owner with a favorite. He doesn't have that one guy he wants to keep in the office because he likes him. He shows up every day, but he doesn't do his job. You know, he, he realizes that, wow, okay, this is really screwed up. And it's more than just the team and the coach. So if you're going to bring in a GM and he's already against package deals right now, I, I almost wonder, you know, people say Showen's the favorite, Pat. But after hearing that, do you think Showen's the favorite now if he was going to bring in Dabo or whatever his name is? Uh, that that's that may be the thing that may cost Showen the job. Right. If he's true to his word or what Mr. Mara just said, if he's true to his word, that will be the thing that will cost Showen his job. The reason why the job, not his job, but the job. Because if he's saying, hey, look, I like you, Sean, but we're going to look at some head coaching candidates, and if Brian Dabo becomes the best candidate, then so be it. But if he's not the best candidate, we're not going to go with Brian Dabo. And Sean's just, I want Dabo, Dabo as my coach. Right. Does that cause Sean the job, or does he relent and let, let him bring in his package deal? Because if Brian Dabo comes, you know he's going to bring on his own offensive staff. And then I guess they they'll decide what the defensive staff is, but right, I don't know. That may cost showing the job, and if it eventually, if he's not chosen, I, I would have to think that's that's what happened until we get the official results of what happened. But that's right. what I think will we'll cost showing the job because I'll be honest with you, he is the favorite. They're the uh, he's the most connected to the Giants out of the people that are interviewing, and I, I think he's a very good guy. I mean. Right, nothing against him. Yeah, nothing against the guy. I mean, I mean, let's let's bring his face up, face up for him, Mr. Sean. Yep. That, that's that's yep. that's that's your leading candidate right there, young guy. I think he has a brilliant mind for football. He's turned that Bills organization around. Um, they went from not making the playoffs to they can't not not make the playoffs now. So, and they have a chance. I mean, they have a good chance. They they faltered down the stretch, but let's see what they do. This first week against the Pats, I actually had the Pats winning, but if they win that game, they could become very dangerous. I'm not going to lie to you. He saw the guy to get for Josh Allen and Stephon Diggs, okay? And look at that combination, just adding Diggs to the roster. He, right. They, they foresaw that, man. That's... And that's with, with them... That, with, go ahead, I'm sorry, Joe. Oh, I was just going to say, that's what made the Bills a playoff team. Exactly. With them with them having that vision to get Josh Allen some weapons to see exactly what he was, because let's be real, Josh Allen wasn't really doing a damn thing in his league until Stefan Diggs and them came over there. I'll say this stat to the end of the days. That man did not have one three hundred yard passing game or one four four touchdown game in his career until uh Diggs and them got there and now he had a full season of about eight games over three hundred yards and he had like five games with over four touchdowns. Yes. Just yes. This, just last year. So uh we'll see. But that's your leading candidate right there, man. We're gonna get into the next question with Mr. Mayor, man. I'm enjoying this. Let's let's Me continue. Too. Stapleton, the record. John, do you feel like you guys have made bad choices and you've identified wrong candidates or in some ways, is this a failure of your process that you've gone through? It's pro Okay, that question right there was by Mr. Art Stapleton, very highly regarded in the Giants community. I uh, have to give him his respect. Sometimes I don't agree with him, but you have to give him his respect about that. He's been doing this a very long time. And he basically asked him, was it the process or was it just your decision making? I'm going to be honest with you. Is all the above because his process was the wrong decision making <laughs> by going by his process. That was the yes. wrong way to go because obviously, you Marins, no offense, you guys know how to make money, but you don't know how to make rosters. I tell you that now, you don't know how to make an organization, but you know how to make a hell of a lot of money. So you got to give them respect in that. But that's my uh, process on. What do you think about that, Joe? That, that was just the loaded question that all the fans wanted somebody to ask him to make him realize he really screwed up. Yeah. That, 
that that question right there was was you know mr mara you know this, i might be asking it but you know the fans are saying enough's enough we know what you're doing okay but but mr stapleton was polite enough not to just name him and say you screwed up he made it uh, the smart question of with your with with the decisions inside and we all know who the decision maker was exactly so that yeah, was just call, calling him out pat is what he was doing yeah that's what it was we all know what it was that's what the media does i'm not gonna i'm not gonna lie i might ask that question as well just to see where his headspace is at and see if that i'm looking at a guy whose ego is just looks like it's been checked yes i don't know what was said in those meetings with him and tish but something happened yeah something happened i don't know what it is i'm not going to speculate if it's bad or good but i can't tell you something happened this is not the same john mayor this is a man that's been humbled and for whatever they brought him into that meeting that's what humbled him i believe in yeah good or bad i don't know i think it's good for the organization whether it's good or bad on his part at least the organization will be doing good, but we're going to see a little bit more about Mr. Mayor. Hopefully no news comes out about our owner, about anything coming out. You know how people do. Right. If you're not, if you're not satisfying people, they try to find ways to get you in your pocket. So hopefully yes. nothing comes out about Mr. Mayor. I think he's a stand-up guy. I think he just doesn't know what he's doing, and he got that full control that he won, and I think he's seeing now that that's the shit I don't want. <laughs> Because I've turned this into absolute hell here in New York. So we're gonna go to the next question, guys. Probably um probably all of the above art. I mean You see? <laughs> I, don't <think laughs> Joe, I don't think me and Joe are a little crazy, huh? <laughs> right. Old Pat Joe might be just on or something. Ooh, we gonna right. continue on. Let me let me stop two more horn. Let's let's continue on. Uh we haven't necessarily made the right choices. Um, I think um, looking back on our process, I wish it had been a little more extensive that we had seen more people um, and uh, maybe taken our time a little bit more with it. And uh, we're gonna try not to make that mistake this time. Well, you don't well, have to worry about Eli being here no more when he was, I'm sorry, Pat. I love Eli guys, don't take that wrong, please. But we know that it was time to move on from Eli. And that's the only reason Gettleman got the job. Exactly. And he said it himself. He wish he would have did more of the process of thinking. I think this cat is a loyal dude. And he wanted to make Eli go out like the champion that he was. And that just happened to be the wrong decision at the time. I yep. think he made a decision with his heart and it costed him in the long run. Yep. That's what I think. Let's get to the next question. Or Schwartz, you have both. Hey, John, um, um, what is your confidence level, level in your ability to make the right choice? Um, you know, a lot of these choices the last few years have not been um, proven to be successful. So, um, you know, you, you know, everything starts and stops with you. You know, do you feel you're capable of making the right choice this time around? I, I do. Oof. All right. Oof. That's a harsh question right there. Yeah. And this question, we have to answer this question like we are John Mayer, not as Big Pass Sports Talk or Classified Joel or New York Giants fan. We have, I, I tend to want to answer questions like I am that person. And if my ego's been checked the way I feel that his ego's been checked, I'm going to be honest. I will say yeah, but in, in the back of my mind, I'm like, shit, I don't know. <laughs> because what I've done the past six to seven years, firing Tom Coughlin, Letting Jerry Reese stay, then firing Jerry Reese and bringing in after Jerry Reese destroyed our franchise by with with the cap room, then telling Dave Gettleman to come in here because I wanted to keep Eli here because I wanted to make Eli happy because I hate the way McAdoo did what he did the bench for Geno Smith. Then it turns out that McAdoo was a wackadoo, and then now I got loyalty to the the, the Dave Gettleman because he came in and took the job because I asked him to do and he did what I wanted him to do. But now I'm a hire Pat Shermer. Now we have to get a quarterback. Pat Shermer wanted Daniel Jones. Dave Gettleman agreed. They picked Daniel Jones. 
And then they eventually benched Eli anyway. So Eli went out the way that you didn't want him to go out anyway. Then Daniel Jones has a decent rookie year. Then the team quits on you with Pat Sherman the next year. And now, now DJ's in limbo. Limbo, you don't know what DJ is after three years of starting. It, his his decision making has been terrible. Then you hired Joe Judge, who was a special teams coach because he was connected to Bill Belichick. You were looking yep. for you were looking for a lifeline. And you went with Bill Belichick's guy, and now it turns out that Joe Judge wasn't the guy. So in about six to seven years, you've been through four coaches and two GMs. Now three GMs. So if I'm thinking about this, I'm really like, damn man, what the hell? Everything I'm touching is going wrong. And I probably have that face that he has right now. <laughs> That's my opinion on it. What, what do you think about it, Joe? Listen, the correct answer for him to say right now is no, but there's no way he can say no. Exactly. He has to say yes. And the reason I say the answer is no is because we already heard rumors of him talking to Parcells. You know he's going to other people. Not only does he have to answer to Tish, but he has to answer to the fans. And he knows he's in a lot of hot water right now. If he does not do the right things, look, let's be serious. Could the Giants be up for sale in a couple of years? You know, let's talk about the one thing that if he doesn't do this right and at least get us to a 500 or above ball club in two to three years, do you really think the fans are going to support the Giants anymore? He might be out as an owner completely. There's no way he's going to be able to take that kind of pressure after what just happened. Back to back to back to back, bad coaches, and now a back another GM. So three GMs that aren't working, five head coach, four or five head coaches that aren't working. He ha he's looking for somebody. That's why I say. He should say no, but he can't because the media would destroy him right now. He doesn't have a lifeline here at all. That was a very, very harsh question. Yeah, that's a damn if you do, a damn if you don't question. If you say no, they're going to look at you like a buffoon, like they already look at you now. And you say yes, they're still going to look at you buffoon because of the decisions you made in the past. So that, that question right there is harsh. Yeah, that's a setup question. This, these are the questions that the media ask people. This is why I'm not a great fan of the media, but these might be the questions that need to be asked because of his decision making for the past right. ten years. Let's let's right. be honest with you, for the past two years, because I think they handled the Odell Beckham situation wrong too. Not saying they shouldn't have got rid of Odell Beckham, but they should have checked his ego before yes. they let it get out of hand. You were yes. seeing that money. You were seeing that money. And just to uh, go on what Joe said, the fans will, the Lions owner has been owner of the Lions, and they've never won anything. The Browns owner has been owner of the Browns, and they've never won anything. Hell. It's different here. It's yes. a different prestige here in New York. We are considered winners. Right. So all the fans that are just fans for the past five to six years or ten years, we are considered winners. We are considered one of the best franchises in football. So if this franchise turns into the Lions, they're going to want something done. And he's, gonna, he's not going to have any choice but to sell because nobody will come to a franchise that's historic as the New York Giants and has been turned to an absolute joke. Right. There's no way he'll be able to keep this franchise. And maybe that's what he was told. Ooh. Ooh. See where I'm going? Yeah. That, because man. I believe Tish has a little bit more power than people think. D man. Because this is 50% stuff. On, yeah, if he's 50% owner and he gets that board on the side, guess what? Mara's overruled. Yeah. See, I didn't know Tish was 50% owner. I didn't, I didn't know either. That. I didn't either. I thought he was only like a 25% or a very low percent owner. If he's 50 50, where. I've been hearing he's 50-50 owner. If you guys in the chat know different, correct us. Yes. Or correct me, because I'm the one that's saying it. Correct me. But if that man is 50-50 owner, all he has to do is get the people on the board on his side. A majority rule. And it's not and hard when gone. you're not winning. It's, he's gone. All right. So, so that's the spanking I'm talking about right Yeah. Now. 
It's amazing what happens when you just keep rewatching a few things and really discuss and get into it, break down some stuff, some of the stuff that will pop into your head that, look, guys, I, man, that, that could very well might be why he's got that look on his face, why his shoulders are slumped, why he's not wearing a suit right now, why he has that thousand-yard stare in his eyes. He doesn't know whether to poop or go blind. And think about, it's not about losing the franchise. Think about what that does to the Mara name. Yes. Can you imagine the New York Giants being a franchise without a Mara in there? You see what I'm saying? He's not just losing his job. He's losing a legacy. Yes. Yes. The New York Giants is Mara. Whether you people want to admit it or not, New York Giants is Mara. That's his bloodline. The New York Giants is fed Maras for, damn, what? Damn near eight decades? Well, since 1923 when his grandfather bought the team. And let's not forget the damn football's named after his father, the Duke. So since 1923, it is now 2022. It's almost a century. A century. Can you guys fathom that? Losing a century of work? Wow. Oof. If, he, if that happens, I'm just going to be real with you. You might have to watch out for Mara. Not because of somebody else, because of himself. Imagine him being in those dark rooms and himself knowing that he lost the Duke's franchise. Right. Father. Right. How's he going to tell his uh, grandkids that they don't have the New York Giants to go work for? Right. This is the type of stuff that we bring here with the Big Blue Crew. We get into it. Right. That's deep. That man loses everything if he has to sell the Giants. Yep. And if Tish and the board get together and make him, he has no choice. If Tish is a 50-50 owner. Yep. If yep. Tish is a 50-50 owner, that's why this man is looking like this. Yep. I, I'm I'm waiting for the answer on this. I'm not gonna lie. Do Paul, and obviously I don't expect a lot of people to believe that, given what's happened over the last few years. And I'm gonna have to earn uh, their trust again. But I, I feel very good about the group of candidates for the general manager position that we have scheduled right now. Um, I think any one of a number of them could would make an excellent general manager. So I, I am confident that that we have the resources to make the right choice here. I hope you are, Mr. Mayor. Man, look at how low he's hanging his head when he answered that question. He's looking down. He's not even looking at the at the guys on the screens. All right. One eye is lower than the other. He, he <laughs> was looking down when he answered that question at the microphones. He wouldn't even look up answering that question. So if he's feeling this much, much shame now, what the hell can he go and tell his families as the head mara right now? He's the head mara. Right. People get this through your head. He is the chief mara right now. It's been passed to him by his late father. Yeah. What the hell can he say to the maras if he loses ownership of the Giants? I, I would not want to be in his shoes. Because there, there's a point in time where the fan base, if, if that news had broke that Mara might have to sell the team, fans would be jubilant. And nobody deserves to lose a team like that. But, you know, if it happens, it happens. And then you will lose the franchise to a guy that came in and helped you out a little bit when you were having tough times back in the day. I think he came in. Yes. When the yes. came in around the 70s. Tish yeah. came in around the 70s. They were almost bankrupt, and Tish came in and bailed them out. And now that you've built it back up, the same man that bailed you out now is going to say, give it to me. Sayonara. 
This wow. is mine now. Wow. A man that never put in the work back in the day with the Duke and them in 1923. Right. He came around over 50 years later. And he snatches your legacy right from under you. Yep. And then even the worst part, people are going to rejoice because he did it. We we don't know if this is true or not. Remember, folks, this is right. just our this opinion. Is just speculation. This is, right. We, we're seeing no news is broke on this. Nothing has been said. We're the only ones to even think of this. You see what I'm saying? Shit gets deep. It does. That's why I just, that's why I just don't think on the surface. I think, Man. I think way beneath the surface. Right. Let's that's, see what the next question is after yeah, that one, Pat. If that's I'm, what's happening. Man, I can see it, bro. Yeah. Let's get to the next question. Bob Glover, Newsday. John, I'm just curious your reaction to um, being in your building, uh, watching the Cowboys game where a lot of Cowboys fans showed up. And then against Washington, not a lot of fans showed up, period. How much did that impact you? And as a, as a kind of a corollary, you said, you, you know, you, you rushed it a little bit last time. Do you think that there was a little bit of comfort in that it had been so long since there was a succession? of front office stability since 1979. Okay, that's the way to get two questions. Yeah, he got two questions in one. Yeah, he did. He tried to get a little humor in there and yeah. try to get the atmosphere a little different because he's been beat down with all these right. other questions. This question is, is ab absolutely worthless, in my opinion, because we all know the fans were frustrated and they're not going to go to the game. So I don't understand that question. You know they didn't come because fans are frustrated. Right. You don't know that. Right. We go deeper into it. I mean, we don't That's even have it. to. That... Go ahead. I was just going to say, we don't even have to break this question down. I'm sorry. Yeah. We all know what it is, man. Exactly. But that gets it to the deeper point that I made. Fans are not coming. That's more ammunition for Tish. To yep. inevitably do what he what he would want to do if it continues this way, if he's 50-50 owner. Because all he would need is the board and mayor is overruled. Yep. Plain and simple. But let's get to the let's let him answer and get to the next question. It's in there, Bob, in violation yes, of the rules. Is. But okay. Um obviously you don't like to see visiting team fans in, in your building, but that's just the way the NFL is. Right now, we had a lot of fans in Miami, a lot of fans in Tampa. Now, certainly it's exacerbated by the fact that we had a poor record this year, but it, certainly it's not a pleasant sight that you that you want to see every time. And, and, and yes, we've gone through this process far too often in recent years after having a lot of years of stability, and it's not a fun process uh, at all. Um, there is nothing more painful to me uh, than making that long walk down the hallway uh, to tell somebody uh, particularly a, a, a good person uh, like Joe, um, that uh, we're making a change. It's gut-wrenching for me. Um, it's been gut-wrenching every time I've had to do it. And um, obviously, I've had to do it far too often uh, lately. Uh, and that's why we're, um, that's why we're in this uh, process again. And um, we're going to get it right this time. Okay, you heard his answer there. That's why I say I think this guy is a loyal cat. Yes. I truly believe he wanted to keep Joe Judge here. Yep. I truly believe he thought Joe Judge would actually be a damn good coach. It's just that the atmosphere that you built for Joe Judge was too much. Right. Right. And that's all it stems from is a rookie head coach coming into this mess. Yeah. You know, if we had a, a veteran coach that came in and just got burned out in three years, he says, I can't do it anymore. And then bring in somebody like Judge, and you've got the front office cleaned out. You've got a new GM. You've got a new scouting department where things were didn't have to be so violent in the turnaround procedure. Judge might have succeeded here. Yeah. But I think not, having, right. not having that good foundation is what really hurt Joe Judge. And as you can see by the, the, the I mean, premium detail that he get, that he gave, he said he hates walking down that hall and going to tell a guy that he actually has. I think he had respect for Joe Judge, to be honest with yeah. you. Yeah, yeah. And go and tell Joe Judge, hey, look, I know I said what I said about a month or so earlier, but my hands are tied and I might have to let you go. Knowing in the back of your mind, you're letting go because of decisions that you've made. Yes. 
Yes. And it's not entirely his fault. He came in and gave the best effort that he could for what he had. And yep. I think I think it hit him hard too, seeing all those clown pictures and everything of Joe Judge, knowing yep. that decisions that he's previously made is making this to where this man, his first time being a head coach, he yep. has to go through this. Yep. And I think he'll be glad to cut Joe Judge a check for the next three years. I think he will. Right. To be honest with you. And if there was some way he could bring him back to the organization, I think Joe, if Joe Judge wanted to come back in some form of way later on down the line, I think Mayor still has the team. He would gladly welcome Joe Judge back. Right. I don't see it, but yeah, if that was to yeah, arise. Yeah, I don't see it, but if that, if that opportunity came back to where Joe Judge wanted to be, let's just say a, a personnel type guy. Maybe. Right. But that's look at his face. Yep. He knows it. He knows it. Yep. But that's what I get from it. Well, what you think about it, Joe? I, I'm getting the same thing, my guy. The same thing. You know, it, it, every time we hear this and we break it down, I can't wait to hear the next question. I, I, I just <laughs> uh, you it, liking it, this so far, huh? Uh, dude, this is amazing. I love this stuff, man. This is, you know, we're going into thoughts and details nobody's even talking about yet, man. Uh, this All is right. blowing my mind because I didn't even think about any of this stuff until we'll, you know, break down interviews and stuff. Exactly. That's why I did it. Let's get into the next uh, se segment. Hey, Joe Jones, NFL Network. Hey, John. I I'm curious if there was a last straw for Joe Judge and where, if anywhere, does that 11 minute address where, as you well know, you know, he took some you know, veiled shots at, at your former coach and, and also a, a, a division opponent, obviously. Uh, that's a question that a lot of people want to hear an answer to. Was there a last straw for Joe Judge and all that and this and that? And Pat and Joe, you're so stupid. You're crazy. Uh, you want Joe Judge back? Well, I said, yeah, I want him back if we can't get a prominent head coach. But – I took my uh, clown nose and my face paint, and I took it proudly. Right. But I will say this. There wasn't a last straw on his point, on his part. If there was a last straw, it was on Tish's part. Yes. Yes. But and not the on fans. his part. Yep, Tish part and the fans. Yes. The quarterback sneaks thing, that might have did Joe Judge in with Tish and the fans, but not this guy. I think he wanted to really bring Joe Judge back. And if what everybody says, the reports are coming out. He was fighting the offensive line coach shit. I'm not going to lie to you. I would have fought him too. Right. <laughs> right. I would have fought him too because you had his offensive line looking absolute shit. Right. But I don't think it was on his part. I think he was forced to do it. And then they made him go do it. Tish didn't do it. They made John Mara walk down there and do that. Notice what he said. I yep. hate having to do that. And I've done it too far often. Again, yep. They make him do the dirty work. They make him look like the idiot. They make him go through all the bullshit and the fire and the brimstone from the fans and get cursed out by fans. They make him say, hey, give everybody a free soda and all this bullshit. And that might have been his idea. It could have been Tish's idea. And he said, do it. You know, and he did it. So maybe <laughs> he has to play the role of Dave Gettleman now. Right. You see what I'm saying? And maybe it's for the best. I think this guy goes off into the shadows. I really do. I truly believe after this GM and head coach <laughs> hiring, I don't think you're going to hear from John Mayer for a long time. You shouldn't. We shouldn't hear from him. We should be hearing from the GM and the head coach. Right. You know, what, just what, like what? Dallas shouldn't be hearing from Jerry Jimmy or Jerry Jones, we should be hearing from Mara. Right. So what, what's your opinion on that right there? That question? Uh, again, uh, this is another one of those loaded questions that, uh, you know, she, she does a radio show. She does call in show. She hears the questions. So what she's trying to do right there is just ask the questions that she's getting asked. Or, you know, sometimes these reporters ask for questions. You know, what do you want to hear? You know, exactly. so sometimes these questions are from reporters that have put out there on Twitter or whatever. Hey, Joe, uh, a press conference with Mara. What questions do you want us to ask? You know, uh, and that might have been one of them that was written in. I mean, because that doesn't really sound like a reporter question. That sounds more like a fan question. Right. And 
I, I don't like it. I don't like it at all. It it, it it put it puts people in bad situations when you ask questions like that. And yes, I know I know a lot of people don't care for John Mayer right now, but he's still a human being. And human beings go through things. We've all made bad decisions in our lives. Right. You live long enough, you're gonna make some decisions that are bad. You're gonna make some decisions that are great. Thank you. Yep. So I mean, that's that's all I already have on that question right there. You have any more on that one? If not, we're gonna go to the next. Yeah, one. go through it. Yeah, because I mean, obviously, I wasn't thrilled with that uh, particular press conference, but I can't say there was one specific uh, act that was the last straw. It was just a culmination of things. Um, uh, we we just got to a point where I, I where I thought we had dug ourselves a hole so deep that I didn't see a clear path to getting out of it unless we completely blew it up and, and started all over again with a new general manager and a new head coach. Um, I still think that there is a really good head coach inside of Joe Judge. I just felt like given where we are right now uh, on the verge of bringing in a new general manager, we have to give that person um, the flexibility uh, to bring in the head coach that, uh, that, that he wants. And I, I think that's, that was a large part of the decision here in, in making a in making a change. I just felt like we really needed to just start from the from from the ground up again. Yeah, that with is, with that, yeah. With that answer, I mean, that's the correct answer to give. And honestly, I believe that's the right answer. And all in all, I think that's the right answer. You're hiring a new GM. You have to give them the flexibility to bring in the people that they want. And that's the first step in winning back this fan base too. Yep. yep. By doing by doing what he said right there, that's the first step he has to take to win this fan base over. And that's probably the reason why Judge is not here. If he didn't have to do that, you know, I, I think him keeping Judge would have would have been a little bit of a, a, a stronger argument, but with you know everything going on, you need a new GM. Let him bring in his guys. Let's see what we can do to become a winning football team again. Yeah, but like I said earlier, he has respect for Joe Judge. He still said there's a good head coach in there with Joe Judge. It's just that the situation that we in, we had no choice. Right. And I believe he had no choice going back to what I said earlier. I think Tish yep. and him came to say, hey, look, <laughs> you don't blow this up. <laughs> gonna blow, we're going to blow it up for real. <laughs> right. If you don't blow this up, we're gonna blow this thing up for real. And he didn't have a choice. Right. Can you imagine the conversation that he, that he had to have with Joe Judge when he had the fire? Oof. Damn, that's hard. Right. Right. People don't think about things like that, but we'll go to the next question. I believe that was a hard process for him. Thank you. I'm Kevin AP. Hey, John, how you doing? Good, Tom. How are you? Good. It, it seemed when you hired Joe, he came in and gave you a, you know, presentation which wowed you. I mean, in 2020 hindsight, do you need to take a step back after you listen to these guys and look at more closely what they're saying? Well, I think that's a fair comment, but we did here. We did a lot of research on him, as we do with all of our candidates. <laughs> Um, you know, he did, he did do an excellent job in that interview. Um, sometimes, you know, some people interview well, some people don't, but you have to do more research than that. But I, I thought our process at that time was, was pretty thorough. I mean, you know, we had spoken to a number of people about Joe and listen, I still believe that there is a good head coach inside of him. Um, but, uh, I just felt like given where we are at the, at the moment and certainly certainly that is not all due to, to, to him uh but given where we are right now i felt like we needed a clean sweep thank you so what that question right there is a little little dumb little question there of course he did his research on joe judge before he hired him right and no there was no special press conference he won over him because that, he had the job already when he gave the press conference so that was a fan question question as well Yep. And like I said, he said it again. I think there's a good head coach, Joe Judge, and I really think that dude believes that, honestly. 
it, it unfortunately judge isn't here no more pat so i mean people need to just stop talking about it you know right. we're, we're we're moving forward and i love that when you didn't pause it right there uh, let's just you know continue on and anything with judge or anything to do with that i think we ought to just listen to it let it play through talk about it at the end and you know it's something we're gonna have to get over as a fan base because i still see people on twitter you know that are still blowing up about judge and still talking about him it's got to stop right. right he's gone he's no longer here you got your wish all Let's right let's continue you know connor you're close hey john for, for those of us old enough to remember the the back-to-back -back quarterback sneak sort of brought back the memories of the bizarre chick fumble and and that period of time which obviously is not a pleasant memory for you but did that sequence really make this situation as far as bringing him back completely untenable? How much did that play into it? Uh, you know, obviously those weren't my favorite play calls in the world. I wish we had run that back when Pisarchik. <laughs> oh, <laughs> that was right there. That was a good comeback. <laughs> that, that was. He said, he, he said, I wish we would have ran a quarterback there, sleep with Pisarchik, but. Yeah. Right, right now, Pat, these reporters are trying to get him to say something about what got Joe Judge fired. Right. So that I'm they can run with it. it. I'm glad you see it. And this yes. is what the media does. Yes. So we're going to continue on. Like I said, that's another stupid Joe Judge question. Oh, the two quarterback sneaks. Right, right. It happened already, man. It's done with. But good comeback by Marin right there. I like that one. I was here. But, <laughs> but, um, uh, you know, Ian, that, that was that was just one minor factor in the overall scheme of things. Obviously not what I was looking for uh, watching the game, but, you know, you can point to any number of play calls that, uh, that, uh, that any of us uh, could have second-guessed, but uh, it was a bit of a surprise to me, let's put it that way. And Doug, okay, the athletic – Hey, John, you know, as a reference, you fired a lot of people over the last couple of years. Um, but what do you say to the fact that your brother is still senior vice president of player personnel, your nephew's co-director of player personnel, and there's a perception that there isn't really accountability for family members who have had prominent roles during this stretch? Well, that All right. Ooh, good that's question. A, that's a good question right there. So basically asking, why is Chris Mayer and your nephew still here? <laughs> that's what the that's right. question ultimately means. Right. And I'm going to tell you why they're still there. They're freaking Maras. Right. They're always going to be there. Yep. This is their bloodline, like I said earlier. You're not going to get rid of Chris Mara and his nephew. At the very best, they will keep their positions, but they will have to shut their mouths. But you're not going to get that satisfaction. You're not going to take that from them. It's his freaking family. It's a Mara thing. <laughs> they're right. going to be there. Right. If you had this franchise, you would have your people in there making money as well. <coughs> Whether or not you let them make decisions, that's on you. But like I always said in the past, I would keep them right there at their positions. And if they suck that bad, I say, look, you're going to keep that position. I'm not going to embarrass you, but you shut the hell up and let me get some people in here that can run it. And I'll just pay them extra, but they won't have the title. That's what I would do for family. That's called loyalty. And this is a loyal dude. He's not going to embarrass his family that way. He's not. They're freaking marriage. That's my opinion on it. You go ahead, Joe. No, because, I mean, you're looking at the guys that are going to take over this team when something happens to him. Come on. What? There we go. Okay. Thank you, Spectrum. You know, look, it, these these are the guys that are going to be taking over this team. They're going to be the future owners. Um, they, they, they're going to have to learn football somehow, some way, some shape, some form. And with what John Mara is going through right now might be the best learning curve that these boys are going to ever get. After being in the, fran the, the this franchise for I don't know how long Chris Mara and his nephew have been here, but they definitely witnessed all the mistakes, all the misfortunes, all the wrong turns. All right. Now, now they're going to have to learn from those mistakes and not repeat history because John Mara has repeated history from the 70s. Bad decisions, bad choices, um, mostly on his part, hiring the wrong people, 
not letting the right people have control. So if we get rid of them, okay, they're not going to have much football knowledge as to the internal workings of the scouting department. They're not going to be in the facility to learn what's going on with the training staff. They're, they're not going to be in there to learn about player development. They're not going to know a good player from a bad player. So if they need to sign a contract for somebody, they're not going to know just exactly what to look for, whether that player is a good player or a bad player. Now, if somebody calls you an asshole, that's not a reason to not sign somebody. You know, it might be true. You might be an asshole. Okay. <laughs> you're going to, you're going to have to get over that ego part of it, but they, they've got to learn. So, and, and, and if Pat says you let them sit in there, they keep their title. They're not doing anything, but they're still learning how to operate a football team. So it's better them doing this where they can't do much harm rather than being the owner and doing a lot of harm. Exactly. Exactly. I couldn't put that better, Joe. People are going to have to learn that, man. This is about a family. This is about a lineage. This is about a culture. That's true culture there. There's a mayor culture with the New York Giants. And it's going to stay mayor. And as long as mayor is there, it's going to be mayor. That's it. That's final. Whether you like it or not. Yep. Next question. Perception. Uh has been created by you and others. And the reality is that um, in terms of my brother, my brother spends most of his time doing evaluation of college players. His grades go into our system and he participates in the draft. Um, all personnel decisions in this building, and this has always been the case, have been made by the general manager and the head coach. When they agree on a personnel decision, they come to me with it. And as long as they're both in agreement, I okay it. The only times I, I would possibly not do that is if there was an off the field conduct issue. So uh, Chris is a very skilled evaluator, but he does not have any authority here other than the fact that I will go to him on occasion and ask him about players. Tim is probably the most respected guy we have in this building. Coaches, uh, front office staff, uh, the general manager go to him, ask his advice on players because he is a good evaluator. <laughs> He's worked his way up from the bottom and he's earned his stripes. He does not have any authority here. The personnel decisions have always been made and will always be made by the general manager and the head coach. If they agree on, on a draft pick, on a UFA, uh, then I'm going to okay it 99.99% .99 of the time. Uh, the only time I will raise an issue about it is if there is a conduct issue. I'll question them about it. I'll make them defend their positions and I'll make sure that they're on the same page. But at the end of the day, if they're in agreement, then that's the decision we're going with. Okay. You heard that answer right there. Now, my question is with us, do you believe it? That's, that's the question you have to ask. Do you believe it? In some parts I do and in some parts I don't. I do believe he wants his general manager and his coach to be one accord and choose the, the, the players that they want to choose. Right. And I do believe this guy took uh, overhandled a little things and he started making decisions for himself. Do I believe Chris Merritt doesn't have any authority to make some decisions? Yes. But I think he went to his brother, them being mayors, and he said, I really like this guy. And I think he said, we're going to go with this guy. Now, that was now, the best, the, the even better question to ask was Dave Gettleman and Joe Judge on one accord? Or was Dave Gettleman and Patrick Sermon on one accord? Who was right. Dave Gettleman and McAdoo on one accord? Right. Was it Dave Gettleman throwing up some people out there that he liked and he just went with it? They never talked about it or anything? See, there was a, there's a discord somewhere. Right, right. In the ranks. And, and we all know you don't call Chris Mara an asshole. Right. So if that happened, that means Chris Mayer did have some decisions on making personnel decisions. You see what I'm saying? Yes. Yes. That's why I don't believe it. I want to get your full take on that. Well, man, I'm enjoying it. Go ahead. I, Give me your take on it, Joe. Man, I tell you, I just, all I can say is I don't believe him right there. I think Chris Mayer is making decisions. I think he does have a little bit more input than what John Mayer is saying right there. I can't help but think it because of reports that have come out. And we haven't heard anything to dispute them. 
Now, if Mara comes out and says something about, you know, I, I'd love to hear reporters say, well, if Chris Mara doesn't have any, uh, you know, a, a thing, uh, you know, actions or he, you know, he has no input, uh, how come you didn't sign that offensive lineman because somebody called him a name? That's the question I want to hear, but you ain't going to hear that. Exactly. So, I mean, I think he's just saying what he needed to say right there. Yep. And I believe that's what he's going to do going forward. Yeah. I think he just repeated what he's going to do going forward. Yes, yes. I do believe he's going to do that. That's why he's doing such an extensive search for his GM and let him pick his head coach. Right. That's why Joe Judge isn't here. <laughs> yep. I agree. See what I'm saying? Yep. So I think he, I think he answered that question of what he's going to do, do going forward, not of what he done, uh, what he's been doing. Right. I love this analyzation, bro. We got to do, do more of these. I love I it. I do too. Let's go on to the next question. I am Dell New York Post. Hey, John. Sorry, my camera is not working. Um, <laughs> <laughs> But, I'm, uh, I'm quite all right with that, Ryan, but go ahead. <laughs> John, uh, how, you've done one interview. You have all these other ones you've lined up. How desirable is the Giants GM job when there's no cap space, the offensive line needs work, the, deep, the pass rush needs work? What is the feedback you've gotten? Is this, do you feel like your job is desirable? Well, especially quarterback. I didn't even mention quarterback, John. Uh, the quarterback situation is not... Uh, solidified. How how desirable is the job you feel? All right, that's a very good question as well. Um, Loaded, but I've, good question. Yeah, uh, we've taken some hits on this one as well. We've taken some hits, like we said, this job is undesirable. That's not what we said. We were asked the question: Was this was this job more desirable than the Chicago Bears job? And I said no, for reasons that what he just said. You say you got to fix off as a line. You have no cap room. You have quarterback questions. You have power struggle questions. You have culture questions. You have personnel questions other than Daniel Jones and the offensive line. What to do with Saquon Barkley? Is Galladay even the receiver that you wanted to, to bring here? There's a lot of questions with this organization, and I think the Bears are more ready to win than what we are right now. But is this an undesirable job? No, it's freaking New York. Right. If you come here and win in New York, you're an absolute legend. As Mike Strahan, as Eli Manning, as Lawrence Taylor, as Tom Coughlin, as anybody that's won, as Bill Parcells. Rock star. As Monty Toomer. Shit. <laughs> as Tiki Barber. He ain't even really played that much. And then what he said what he said, but people still love Tiki here. As Brandon Jacobs. As Jason Pierre Paul, people still love him. Well, Christ, just ask Manningham and uh, what's his name? The helmet catch. Uh, Tyree. Ask Phil yeah. Sims. Yeah. Ask Phil Sims. Joe Shit, Morris. Hostetler. Otis Hostetler. Anderson. Bavaro. Yep. <laughs> we can keep naming people yeah. after people after people after That's people. That's right. We can keep doing it. Because this is a historic franchise. So desirable as far as coming in here and being able to build a name. Hell yeah. One of the tops in the league. One of the tops in the league. Desirable of coming in here and knowing what you have to do? Probably not. Right. Probably not. I agree with Joe, I, I, I like to know what you think about that. I'm just going to agree, man, because you're absolutely right. This is New York. This is the Giants. We got four trophies. Uh, we've been through storms like this before. We're going to weather it. We're going to get back to winning. You know, uh, things are coming full turn right now, and, and we should be definitely looking forward to the 180-degree turn we're going to be making here real soon. You know, we're listening to a guy that's the owner, and, and you know what? He's saying the right things, but there's a difference between saying the right things and doing the right things. We all <laughs> know that. Right. So now it's more of him doing and less talking. That's absolutely right. Practice what you preach. He's preached right. a very good game in his interview because he's had to take a piece of humble shit pie. I continue to say it. it yep. Sounds nasty, but that's what he's had to taste. And you can see it all over his face. But that was a very loaded question, but one that needed to be answered and one that needed to be asked. That was a pretty good question to me. Yep. 
Yep. Well, Ryan, all I can tell you is based on the number of uh, inquiries that I've had from prospective candidates, um, we're not going to be able to interview even 20% of all of them. This is a very desirable job. We happen to have a lot of draft capital uh, coming up. I, I think this is an organization that people want to work for. Um, so I've been heartened by the fact that um, so many people have expressed an interest and including people who are uh, very talented and who have a legitimate shot at getting the job. Um, we haven't been turned down by anybody yet. So that's your answer. That's His your stomach answer. is doing flips, Pat, right now. Mm -hmm. He's, he's hard nervous. To swallow. Yeah, hard to swallow. He's very nervous. Yep. But there's your answer right there. People are calling to get interviews for this job. And I'm not going to say that's a bold face lie because they had over 15 people asked to be interviewed for the job. Yep. So obviously it's desirable because people want to come there. And forget to mention the fact that we do have draft capital. We have 10 draft picks. So the new GM and the new head coach are going to have 10 draft picks to work with their first yeah. year. Well, we got Those 10 draft picks, but my God, Pat, the scouting needs to be tore up. The medical needs to be tore up. The training needs to be tore up. The turf needs to be tore up. <laughs> you know, yeah. these guys are injured. You know, we need so many pieces. We're losing a lot of players because we just don't have the money to sign them because of other needs. It's going to be a mess here for the first year or two to get stuff straightened out. And I beg the question of fans, are you willing to wait? Right. You want, you, want, you wanted it blown up, and you got it. Are you willing to go through the trenches with somebody? Right. That's the question. That's what's going to happen. A lot of trenches. Exactly. Let's get going through the interview process. We're going to wrap it up pretty soon, but let's go right. on ahead. Hey, John. If I could just follow up on the, your answer before about Chris and Tim and everyone, uh, and also then ask you, you know, how you guys came up with the list of GM candidates. But I'm, I'm curious, do you think that them being part of ownership doesn't though hold maybe more more sway than if it was somebody else? More. That doesn't make any sense. But I kind of see what he's trying to get at. He's trying to say that. Look, you got family members in the in the scouting department. Don't they have a little bit more authority than what you're saying that they have? I mean, yeah, you can go that route if you want to. That's I, I kind of get it, but yeah, that's a, 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 he just didn't word it right at all. And he already answered that question earlier, right? But He's, we'll continue on unless you have something else to put on. No, the no, that that's it. That's. Sway in terms of what? In regards to, you know, when they make a recommendation on a player, you, like I know it just goes into the system like everyone else, but it's a, they're not anybody else. They're actually part of ownership. I, I do not think it holds any more sway. It, it, that has not been my experience here. I, I, li I listen to them, uh, but there are, there are many voices in this building, but the only two voices at the end of the day uh, that matter are the head coach and the general manager. They make the final determination. They listen to them because they recognize their evaluation skills. But there are other people in the building who have evaluation skills as well and who have voices as well. But they do not have undue influence on the final decisions that are made here. They absolutely do not. Oh, pause it. <laughs> I want to bring up Matt Pert because he was picked by the scouting department. <laughs> you see exactly where I'm going, don't yeah, you, Pat? Yeah, go ahead. But I, I want to know who in the scouting department was, was the one that said we need to draft Matt Pert in 99. All right, you answer me that question, John, and then I'm going to believe you or not, whether or not your brother and your nephew have more power. Once I get the answer to that question, don't lie to me. That's a question that needs to be asked. Don't bullshit me. You want my respect. I'm a fan, damn it. Don't bullshit me. <laughs> right. I mean, you hit it right there. Nail on the head right there, man. I mean, obviously they had a little bit more power than what you're saying. Let's just be real with it. Right. You're saying what's going to go ahead, go forward. That's what you're answering about. 
that's what your answer is is what you're gonna do going forward but yes in the past i believe they had more say so than what you're saying obviously they did that's obvious yes it is how, how did you come on the list for GM candidates and, and who's involved in that process? I mean, that's something that I, I, I've said this before. I'm always conscious of uh, personnel around the league. It's I, I always keep a list um, of possible head coaches, possible uh, general managers. I look at it. I look at the successful teams uh, at, at what they're doing. I have a lot of people around the league that I, that I talk to whose opinions uh, that I respect and uh, at the end of the day, uh, Steve and I put together the list. Steve Bellitti, NJ.com. Hey, John, I'm curious, is this your lowest moment in your association with the Giants? And is this, is this as embarrassed as you've been about the franchise? Are you serious asking that question? Are you serious asking that question? You see the shit? You see the shit the media does? Oh, my God. Yeah, That's just let. That. Yeah, I'm going to let that play, but this is why I do this. I want to stop players and coaches and people from going through shit like this. I know, I know it's probably impossible, but it's a step going forward. I'm a media guy, and there's no freaking way I ask him a question like that. Right. What do you want him to say? What do you want him to say? What are you going to get out of that answer? What, is, what does that help with the franchise? Does that help the franchise at all? No matter how he answers that question or not, you're going to bash him. Right. He says yes, you're going to bash him. He says no, you're going to bash him. How can it not be the lowest part of the front? Right. What are doing? If he says yes, man, you're, you're just so incompetent that you let it get this way. You see what right. I'm saying? Right. I don't ask dumbass questions like that. I'm going to say dumbass questions like that. Right. That's not what I want to do if I'm a media personnel, which I'm going to get done. That's why I'm doing shows like these to build my resume and bring my guys with me like Joe, Lou, Miz, the Big Blue Crew. All right. One day you're going to hear Big Pat Sports Talk answer a question to John Mayer or, so, or whoever was the owner at the time. No matter how long it takes, I'm going to get it. I'm going to be able I'm going to be one of those people to call in on one of those screens and ask them a question. Right. I'm going to ask them a sensible question, not no BS like that. Do you have anything to go on that, Joe? If not, we're going to continue on. Yeah, just right through it. I don't even want to give this guy credit. Right. Honestly, I would have to say yes. Yes, it is. Um, I kept thinking during the season that uh, we had hit rock bottom, and then each week it got a little worse. So, uh, honestly, I, I'm not proud of saying this, but if I'm going to be 100% honest, I would have to say the answer is yes. Pat Leonard, Daily Ghost. I just want to look at his face when he said that. Right. I'm watching him. Is that what you want? You want to beat it down, beat a man down even more? Yep. Is that what you want? Does, does, is this day and age that people just want blood that bad? Right. You want to embarrass right. somebody that bad? The man is obviously embarrassed. I don't think the guy wants to be here. But he's doing right. it because he doesn't have a freaking choice. Right. I don't like questions and things like that. Why are you going to ask somebody a question where where they embarrass themselves no matter what, what he says? Because even if you say next question, you're going to come up with something for that too. Right. Right. So you just put somebody in a bad spot, and I don't like that at all. Even if it is John Mayer, you call him whatever you want to call him. It's not right. Hey, John, how you doing? Hey, Pat. Um, you, you say Chris doesn't have any authority, but he was only he was one of only three people, along with yourself and Steve, interviewing your first GM candidate. And my question is about, uh, you know, do you think you, Chris, and other family members need to take a step back from the football operations and dramatically change the way you operate on a daily basis in order to see this fixed? Well, what we need. Well, that was a fair question. He cleaned yeah. it up a little bit. He cleaned it up after the first initial question. Because the first, if you would have ended it that way, I would have said he's a freaking mayor. He's teaching them how to get things done because maybe if I pass anything and he wants his brother to take over before the grandkids, right? Yes, I will have him there to see how the interview process and things go. But then he said on the other side, 
do you think you guys need to step take a step back? And honestly, yes, I think they do need to take a step back. I think they've been heavily involved in everything that's been going on with this organization, and it hasn't worked out. It's turning into a shitstorm. Right. So I believe, yes, they do have to take a step back. That's my perspective on it. I think they had a stronghold on things, and I think that rubbed a lot of people the wrong way, and I think a lot of people stopped doing their damn jobs. Yep. Because if they have no faith in you, why the fuck are they coming to work? All right. That's my pers perspective. Well, what do you think about it, Joe? Ben, I can't add anything to it. I mean, it, it is what it is. We've harped on this and harped on it. Um, I, I, I just, I got nothing for it anymore when it comes to this subject because we all know how it's going down. Yeah, really. I'm, I'm a little bit tired of talking about it. I know exactly what's going on. I think the whole fan base knows exactly what's going on. And like I said, I think he, I think he took his whipping. And he's going to let things go the way they're supposed to go. He's going right. to take a step back. The mayors are going to take a step back because I think they've been forced to take a step back. Just yep. like back in the day, you mentioned it. You're the first person to mention, mention it, that Daddy Mayor had to do the same thing with George Young. Yep. They made him take a step back because he was ruining, ruining a franchise full of championships. Well, it, and Tim Mara, his nephew, is the one that wrestled the power from him and brought right. in Young. Him in the NFL. So, I mean, that's 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 what I get about it. Joe, if you have anything else to add on it, if not, we're going to go ahead and finish out this interview and we're going to wrap it up. Yeah, I feel it finished this thing out. All right. What need to do is to hire the right general manager to oversee the football operations, and that's what this process is about. I mean, you make it sound like uh, we're having um, undue influence on the football operations here. I've, I've said this repeatedly for, for whatever reason. Um, you guys keep asking me about it. It's the general manager and the head coach uh, that are mo most important people in this building in terms of making personnel decisions. Chris is in those interviews because I he's part of ownership and I value his opinion. Uh, I value I value his uh, his skills and and I want him in there. At the end of the day, um, I'll listen to him, but it'll be Steve Tish and myself who make the final decision. We'll take two more: Zach Rosenblatt, Ralph Vacchiano, Zach Rosenblatt. Uh, John, uh, in the past, you've admitted that you know there were some mistakes made in the 2018 and 2019 off seasons. Um, I'm, I'm curious if you regret bringing Dave back these last two years, and, and why you felt it was the right decision to let him uh, close out the season as you uh, well. Getting ahead. All right, that question there. <laughs> Do you regret bringing Dave back? What is he supposed to say right there? And that's why we're gonna wrap this up <laughs> soon because. I believe the just, question after this is going to be just as stupid. So that's the last yeah. question we're going to hear. Um, what is he supposed to say? I don't. I don't get it. I mean, Joe, you take it. I don't. I don't get what. I man, right. look, I I don't know what what the dilemma is with the media and why we have to talk about everything that's happened in the past. Look, I know history dictates what you do going forward. I think everybody that's ever learned anything about history realizes you learn from your past mistakes, but you have to have a vision going forward. And these damn reporters are just not going to let this go easily. They're going to keep bringing up the Gettleman thing. They're going to keep bringing up the judge thing. Um, yeah, we're tired of this and these damn beat reporters, but people got to stop clicking on these damn links that say Gettleman and judge. TMZ's running around showing pizza, you know, pictures of Judge because he ordered pizzas and he ordered right. some beer. Whoop de friggin' do! I just got fired. You think I'm not going to eat pizza and drink beer? Right. Are you serious, <laughs> man? I might even order sushi for all I got. I'll get a right. Japanese Chinese chef in here and do it right on my walk. I shit. <laughs> you know, I'm going to relax for a little bit. I've had a strenuous two freaking years. Between the fan base ownership and trying to fuck it, sorry, trying to fist fight uh, uh, coaches, you know, cause, <laughs> right. you know what? More power to them. Grab a fishing pole, get in a boat, grab a six pack, 12, whatever, go out there and drink all day. I don't care what you do afterwards. This stuff needs to stop, man. It's like, 
uh, we keep getting the questions, who do you like for the next GM? And then we get questions of, well, Judge screwed it up or Gettleman sucks so bad. Look what he did. Look, it's done. It's over with. It's gone. It's history. It's bad history. Exactly. Why do we have to keep harping on it? Forget it. But, yeah, that, that that's the last question I can handle from this interview. I know if we get tired of it. I know America got tired of it. God, dog. Right now. Jeez. Made me feel a little bad for the damn guy. Right. This last part of the show, man, we're going to talk about some of those GM candidates that they are interviewing. We've got a couple of, to show you. The first one who actually they say is the ringleader to get the job. He's the favorite. It's the Joe Sean. Very young guy. Knows what he's doing over there with the Bills. Helped build the Bills into a playoff contender every year and a championship contender. I think they made the AFC championship not too long ago. Uh, it took the Bills from being one of the worst offensive teams and to one of the best at times. Um, I think he's a very good candidate. I think he can very well do the job. He's not my favorite, but he is the favorite in people's eyes. What do you, what do you think about this guy here, Joe? Uh, we're so close to Buffalo, especially the fans in Pennsylvania, Ohio, Western New York. Uh, you get closer to the South. Um, you know, a lot of people in this area are Giants fans, but they watch the Buffalo Bills too, or we're forced to at least listen to everything that goes on because that's on the channels. So, uh, uh, and a lot of his popularity is, is Josh Allen's the hottest thing right now going in the AFC. Uh, at one point in time, he's taken over for Patrick Mahomes, but then they went on, the Bills went on a three game skid. They're losing to some bad teams and the fans were starting to get upset and make some noise. And then they started winning again. And, you know, they're, they're uh, Man, Bills fans are Bills fans. Uh, they they love to just go through tables. I never understood that one, but if if that's what they enjoy doing, uh, you know what, Bills Mafia, more power to you. Um, I, 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 I'm up in the air with this guy because I I do watch the Bills stuff. Uh, I mean, they're complaining about the old line. Um, you know, of course the Bills and the Patriots go back and forth with each other. You know, fans do what fans do, like we do with the Eagles or the Cowboys. They're in the same division. I, I just, I, I worry about bringing in his buddies. Mm -hmm. That's, that's my thing. Even though Mara said, you know, we want a GM. Who does this guy have ties to? outside of the Buffalo Bills organization as a coach, as a offensive coordinator, as a defensive coordinator, you know, scout teams. Who, 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 who has ties to this guy? You know, when we mention other people like, like Jim Caldwell, he's got ties to other people. When we bring up Lovey Smith, he's got ties to other people. I mean, and then we talk about, um, you know, uh, the guy that just got fired in Miami, Flor um, uh, Brian Flores. Brian Flores, yes. Okay, you know, he's got ties to Miami, but what other coaches does he have ties to? New England? So Brian Flores comes here, you know, wh where's he going to develop his coaching tree from? Because I'm sure he learned about mistakes and everything in Miami, and he's not going to be doing the same things that he did down there. He's going to probably be looking for different people. But can this guy and Flores work together? That's the problem. Can this guy and Lovey Smith work together? They have no ties together. Caldwell, they have no ties together. You know, you, you and you could say the same thing about all these other guys that we're going to be looking at. They're young. What, what other staffs have they worked on? What other teams have they worked on? What other coaches have been, you know, on that team that went somewhere else that they can pull from? You know, let's look at Wink Martindale. Harbaugh's staff has not turned over a lot. Exactly. So if we, if we were to get Hortiz and Wink Martindale, where's he going to pull his coaches from? He's going to pull them from where he knows. Where's the GM going to get his head coach from? From where he knows. 
So this is the dilemma. You guys can say you want Harbaugh out of Michigan. You guys can say you want Flores. You guys can say all this stuff, but you've got to look at the, the ties that are assisted or you know associated with these head head candidates of, of, of the GM. Yeah, I mean that's true. We're gonna go briefly through the next candidates. This guy here, no, this is not J. Cole. This is Ryan Poles. <laughs> Man, he looks like a young J. Cole, but this is Ryan Poles, guy from Kansas City, and has been through every single step of scouting. This is my yeah. favorite candidate here. I believe he can do a very good job here if he's hired. Joe, give me your perspective on Mr. This guy has rocketed up from the beginning, uh, from the very first scouting step you can take all the way up to assistant GM. He has never stopped. And it's not like he's only in a place one or two years. He's been in some of these places, you know, three, four, five years. So he started out at one spot three years, went up to the next spot, was there four years, went to the next spot, was three years, went to the next spot, was five years. And he just recently became assistant GM. If the, if the Chiefs have that much faith in this guy to make him an assistant GM and keep him on the staff to coach, you know, the, the development tree and skyrocket this guy up, this means he's got talent. They're not going to do this with just some Tom, Dick, or Harry. You know, hey, look at that Chiefs team these last five years. The, their development, they built an offensive line. That was a problem. They knew it after the Super Bowl last year, and they hit on some guys. This guy knows talent. This guy understands what it takes to be a scout. This guy knows what it takes to be a GM and build an offensive line and, and where to create the benefactors on your team. You know, working with contracts with Tyreek Hill, Kelsey, Mahomes, you know, some of these other guys. He got uh, Tyron Mathau, the honey badger in there. But look at the players this guy's bringing in. All right. My top candidate. I, that's all I have to say about Me that. too. My top candidate. Here's my second. Yes. Mr. Joel Ortiz. Yes. More Ravens. All I gotta say is he worked on Ozzy Newsom. That's all I gotta say. What you what you got? <laughs> what you got? I'm gonna go with that, man. Ozzy Newsom, the greatest GM the last 25 years. You can't change my mind with that. The way that this rabbit this Ravens team is built. If he learned under him, he learned anything. If he only learned a third of what Ozzie Newsom knew, I want him. If we can't get polls, I want this guy. That's exactly. all I got to say. <laughs> now we got Mr. Ed Dodds from the Indianapolis Colts. Like this guy as well. He knows how to build an offensive line. And, hey, that's damn good with me because the offensive line is what we need. So if you hire him, I wouldn't be mad with this pick at all. Joe, give me your perspective. And look, this guy knows talent. Um, this guy knows how to build a team. Um, I mean, look at the running back. Look at the wide receivers. Look at that defense on the Colts. Look at the guys that these these guys, this guy has had, had the opportunity to bring into this team. You know, was Carson Wentz the smartest move? No, but he was probably the only move, even though that might bite him in the butt for a couple of years. Uh, you know, once has definitely got some progress and Frank Reich's the coach, uh, you know, they let Frank Reich get who he wants. Yeah. Isn't, isn't that what we want out of our GM? Exactly. That's, that's about all I got to say. The guy knows how to build, he knows how to draft players. He knows how to bring them in. Exactly. What more can you ask for? And the last guy we're going to talk about tonight, Mr. Adam Peters from the San Francisco 49ers helped build that 49ers roster with his guy Jimmy G, Ooh we can he get a playoff playoff win against Dallas this upcoming weekend? Man, we'll see. But uh, just to get into it, he actually built the offensive line with the 49ers as well. He did the bold move of getting Leonard, I mean, uh, Williams from the Washington football team. Yep, uh, he had that injury. He said he wasn't going back to the Washington football team because his training staff mis misdiagnosed him. Hey, yep. Giants fans, have you heard that before? Um, right. He got Williams. He got some other offensive linemen there. They had one of the best offensive line, offensive lines in football. One of the best running games in football. And man, you got to get this credit for getting Mister D. Bo Samuel. It, I think he's climbing up charts as one of the best receivers in the league right now. 
And George Kittle may be the best tight end in the league. But, Joe, give me your perspective before we get out of here. Man, I was just going to say Kittle right there between them two. Wow. What what playmakers, what stars, third round, second round. Wow. Uh, look, this is uh, – um, um, God damn it. I, I can't remember his name. The GM. <sighs> Former for, pro- for the, the 49ers. John Lynch. John, John Lynch, Lynch. Thank you. This is John Lynch's right-hand man. This guy has literally been called John Lynch's right-hand man. He's involved an awful lot when it comes to activities inside that 49ers organization. John Lynch respects his opinion a lot. If John Lynch can respect this man's opinion, I believe that this man could. I, I Now, look, for me, there's a 49ers rivalry. All right, I hate the 49ers, but that's from the 80s. But if this man could come in here and do what he did from the 49ers to the Giants in two years, good draft picks, not giving up a lot of equity, you know, good contracts, getting the right players in here. I don't I don't know if there's really a guy that we listed the last four guys that's a can't miss. Right. Right. I like all I like all these guys. I'm not gonna lie to you. And I wouldn't be mad with either one of them. I just think Ryan Pose will be the best one for it, but I'm starting to like this guy Adam Peters a lot more too because if he was John Lynch's right-hand man, usually what that means is he's telling John Lynch, hey, look, I got some guys for you. Right. So I'm get these guys and I'm going to make you look good, but eventually I'm going to get a GM spot my damn self. Right. But I think the I think the 49ers will miss this guy if he leaves to get a GM position wherever he goes. I think he will definitely be missed. And he yep. just looks like a GM. <laughs> I'm not going to lie yeah. to you. He, he just looks like one, bro. He does. He looks like he's going to be about his business when he gets in there. And he's going to run some things. So hopefully, right. hopefully these, some of these candidates, one of them pans out and turns to be, be one of the best GM decisions we made in a very long time. Yep, I agree. So we can stop having Mara look like this, and maybe he can get back to looking like this. Yep. Shout out to John Mara. He's the owner of the New York Giants, so I have to root for him because I'm a New York Giants fan till I'm through. Big Blue till I'm through. I'd like to thank everybody, Big Blue crew. We bringing out hits for you. We're going to bring the hits for you, man. We're going to get a lot of things done with a lot of shows coming up, man. Yep. Me and this guy right here on the screen, we definitely going to be bringing you the hits. Hopefully you enjoyed this segment of the first <laughs> segment of Giants Interactions with Big Pass Sports Talk and Classified 3F with Joe. Like Joe says, there's no secrets here, man. That's right. No secrets for you. We're going to give our opinions, whether you like us for them or you hate us for them. Just thank you for listening to our opinion. And that's the God on God honest truth. So, any last words before we get out of here, Joe? Uh... I don't know. You want to hit that smoke screen? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Right. Man, I love that ending. Night. I'm not going to lie. Yep. And next episode will be next week. And until then, smoke screen. <laughs>